Now the third inner preliminary. <coughs> the practice on Vajrasattva. So as you know, usually people meditate on Vajrasattva so that they can purify their uh, negative actions, obscurations, and their habitual tendencies. So because we need to purify uh, all of these things, because they are the uh, uh, Buddhist point of view, they are the main obstacles to developing along the spiritual path to liberation. Uh, so that's why it's very important to uh, purify our obscuration so that uh, the realization can uh, arise. Uh, and also the teachings of Buddha and their uh, all our lives, um, success, including sort of success in uh, such ordinary thing as family and friendship, business and health, and all of this depends upon purifying negative karmic uh, the obstacles. You know, uh, therefore, the practice of purification is one of the uh, another sort of you know uh, important uh, uh, solutions to our <coughs> problems and it's extremely uh, necessary uh, even for people who believe there is only one lifetime uh, this we are talking about when we practice Bhajrasattva, we are uh, thinking about the obs obstacles, obscurations, all of that. Uh, uh, Paprambuchi um, said that only uh, good thing is that uh, we can uh, purify it through our practice, this negative uh, karmas. I mean, the negative karma, uh, they're really nothing good about, you know, our negative uh, uh, actions. But good thing is we can purify. Uh, so that's why uh, if you practice on Bhajrasattva, <coughs> uh, not just to practice Bhajrasattva, but practice Bhajrasattva correctly, uh, then there is no doubt that uh, you will receive a uh, most powerful sort of purification. So, um, uh, as also you probably know, uh, Bhajasattva is practice that is mostly uh, connected to purify negative actions, negative actions, uh, obscurations, and habitual tendons, we say. Uh, that are the sort of main obstacle to developing uh, along the spiritual uh, uh, path to uh, enlightenment or liberation. Uh, so here we say the term uh, negative action and obscuration is uh, used here uh, in a general meaning. Uh, it refers to the four kinds of uh, obscurations. First is, we said, karmic obscurations. Uh, second is the uh, obscuration of uh, negative emotions. Uh, third is conceptual obscurations. And fourth is the obscuration of habitual tendency. Um, and then the karmic obscuration here, the first. Karmic obscuration means naturally sort of negative 
actions, right? Both physically and mentally, uh, such as sort of killing or stealing or lying or so on and so on. These are sort of naturally uh, negative uh, actions. So that's why this is karmic obscurations. And then second is the meaning of the obscurations of negative emotions, right? So this means the, the three afflictions, attachment, uh, anger, and ignorance. These three afflictions are the root of uh, our um, unhappiness. So uh, that's why these negative emotions, obscurations of negative emotions, three uh, poisons, uh, the, the root of the suffering. Uh, and then uh, we have the conceptual obscuration, means the, for example, conceptual obscuration means a belief that all phenomena, all these phenomena truly exist and sort of permanent forever. Most of people really think that, right? Most people, okay, this is the same. Last year I came here. Today I came here, I'm here, everything's the same. So these kind of people are thinking this is permanent. So that, that's this kind of obscurations, conceptual obscurations. It's not permanent, it's impermanent, moment by moment, changing all the time. But we think sort of there's a mystic, misunderstand or mystic, you know. So we think this is permanent. So that's the. Third, and then uh, of course the obscurations of habitual tendency. This <laughs> means very sort of subtle forms of conceptual obscurations, you know. So those are the main sort of, uh, uh, you know, uh, obstacles um, that, you know, uh, and cause of samsara. So Vajrasattva is connected, and if you practice, and purification, so we can purify all of these uh, things. Uh, these are very detailed in Buddhist philosophy, but today uh, you need to know the four kind of obstacles and then what that means, just very generally. I'm sorry, that's very generally, you know, that's, that's very, that's, that's enough. Uh, and <clears throat> when we practice Bhajrasattva, uh, then the uh, Shantadewa uh, says that uh, what is their few questions, okay? You should remember the what is to be purified? Shantadewa asked us, you know, what is to be purified? So this, very important, six doors of negative action. Six doors of negative action. <coughs> The first door, there are six doors in negative actions, okay? That, what is to be purified? The answer is the six doors of negative actions. The first door is the door of time. We call it door of time. This means all the negative actions we accumulated in samsara from very long time until now. Right, so they're long time. That's we call it the uh, 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 the negative obscuration, the habitual tendency. Right, so this this is another one. The, the, we had this. We develop our negative uh, karmic seed, negative karma. Long time. If you believe the past and future life, there's no beginning, and until now. Even though this life, you know, we are, uh, eight, uh, you know, uh, 50, 60, 80 years old. So think about it, how long we, d every day, we are accumulate the negative karmas. So the one is time, the door of time. And all these sort of, you know, um, negative actions we have done in uh, limitless time. Okay, we have to purify them. And then second door is the door of motivation. Okay, 
think about it. And the motivation, the, the, the door of motivation, and it, it, it refers to all negative actions motivated by attachment, anger, jealousy, and ignorance. Okay, our motivation. We have to change that. And the third door is the door of accumulation. And it refers to all the negative actions we have gathered with our body, speech, and mind. So, uh, you know, uh, that, that is the door of accumulation. <clears throat> Fourth door is the door of the nature. It refers to all our naturally negative actions such as, you know, like, you know, these ten, uh, ten negative actions, you know, right, killing and stealing, all of that. That's the nature, nature negative actions, naturally negative actions. So that's the nature. And then fifth door is the door of the object. Door of object, which means to all the negative actions we have accumulated in relation to the samsara, you know, relation to to this world, you know, that is the object. And then sixth door is the door of function. It means, you know, to all the negative actions and, uh, you know, and frequently, you know, this, you know, we have obstacles and uh, illness and all of these sufferings, you know, suffering and all these negative actions that we have sort of accumulated. So that's the kind of functioning, you know. It's, a, it's because we are unhappy because of this and that, right? So that is what is to be purified. Shantan, there was second question. What does the purify? The antidotes, the, the four powers, okay? The four powers in order to purify our negative these actions, we must rely on four powers. Uh, uh, so these four powers, therefore, are uh, part of uh, the Vajrasattva practice. Uh, so during the practice, we use um, these powers as antidote to our negative actions. Okay, So the four powers are the power of the first, first power? Support, yes, power of support. This means to take, uh, to take refuge in Bajar Sattva, right? Bajar Sattva and use him as your support, you know? That's the first power. I will, I will, I will describe, I will describe more uh, uh, later about the Bajar Sattva. When we uh, say the, the, the uh, when we practice Bajar Sattva, we have to visualize Bajar Sattva, right? So that's the first power. Uh, what is the second power? Yeah, power of the regretting. Yeah, having done wrong, you know, done wrong. So this means that we develop sort of, you know, a deep feeling of regret while we are sort of confessing our negative past actions. Otherwise, if we do not have regret our past actions, they cannot be purified. You know, oh, we have to regret. And that's uh, uh, second. And third power, power of resolution. This means to make promise to never do these negative actions ever again, OK? Uh, without making a vow, you know, or promise, for the future, there is also sort of no purification. We are doing continue, you know, harm others and all of that. We have to promise, I will not do this. I will never do this again. So that's the resolution, the second, no, third power. And then the fourth power of the power of the, the action, action as an antidote, antidote. So this power means to do uh, any sort of um, many uh, positive uh, actions um, uh, as you can uh, as an antidote to your past negative actions. For example, uh, like cultivating bodhicitta, uh, dedicating the merit, all of the good things that we do, all of that, good things. That is the kind of, you know, action, power of action as antidote. So uh, that's, that's the answer, you know, the, the what does the purify? You know, uh, the four power, practice, practice in Bajrasattva, 
uh, uh, the, and the, the, the four powers. And then Shantan there was, how do they purify? That question. And uh, this is, you remember, uh, uh, three sperm methods, right? The question is, how do they purify? Three, through, three sperm methods. There, uh, you know, the, 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 the three sperm methods uh, means the, before the beginning, giving rise to the bodhicitta and practice with pure motivation uh, to make sure that the practice and action become a source of good things, good for the future, right? That's the first sperm method. And second is to have a mind free from uh, uh, thoughts and negative and conceptualizations, which means to practice without distraction. Um, and then at the end, uh, when you uh, have done anything that good to uh, good and virtue everything, you know, then uh, you must be sure dedicate for the sake of all beings. That, that's, you know, uh, three sperm method. So, uh, so you have to understand uh, these questions and answers in, in order to practice Bazar Sattva. And now I will explain uh, about how to do Bazar Sattva practice. Uh, if you understand this. Uh, so, you know, Bazar Sattva practice, okay? Some people, you know, might think these kind of visualizations are kind of funny, but, you know, uh, I think it is the most powerful method to destroy the ordinary negative thoughts. When you visualize these positive thoughts, there is no negative thoughts during the visualization. So that means this visualization can destroy your ordinary negative thoughts. That's why these visualizations are very important, okay? Uh, so, uh, so this is, uh, again, the Bajrayana, right? Bajrayana practice and Bajrayana's method. Uh, but <coughs> uh, these visualizations, for the beginners, you know, this, uh, this visualization of Bajra Sattva, uh, it's a little bit complicated, really, a little bit complicated and difficult the first time, but uh, you can do it. It's, uh, it's uh, not that difficult. So you start by visualizing, uh, uh, again, a white, white lotus above your head. Uh, on the lotus is visualized the Bajrasattva. Um, and... Uh, uh, and then as soon as you visualize Bajra Sattva, uh, and Bajra Sattva, his color is uh, white, and uh, um, uh, he has uh, one face, two arms, uh, and his right hand holds the uh, Bajra, and uh, left hand holds the bill, and so his two arms crossed, crossed, you know, at this time. You have to visualize that. I mean, that's in our preliminary. It's very clearly say that. And his, his legs also, you know, are uh, uh, crossed in badger posture. Uh, and also in this case, he's, uh, uh, he's in union with the spiritual concert, uh, who is also white. So, and their body are sort of, uh, when you visualize this, uh, in the, their body are empty appearance, you know, without any substance of their own. So like, for example, you know, reflections of the moon in a water, you know, it's a, it's a, or, you know, forms reflected in a mirror, you know, there's no substance. So this is power of spot, you know. Mm, Bajar Sattva, right? So you visualize Bajar Sattva. That's the first power. Uh, and uh, not done. Uh, in Bajar Sattva, and his, uh, this, uh, this visualization, not in our preliminary, but you have to. Uh, it's very important. Uh, in Bajar Sattva, now you visualize Bajar Sattva uh, above your head, right? And then his heart, Bajar Sattva's heart, visualize a kind of small moon disk, and on the moon, visualize the, the, then the syllables, okay, 100 syllables. That's why I think a little bit complicated, but you know, you don't have to um, recognize 
all these hundreds of bones, buzzer, no. So it's just uh, visualize buzzer surface, heart center, visualize small moon disk, and top of moon disk, the white hong syllable, uh, the center of the moon. And then uh, the visualize then um, the, its, its syllables around, uh, you know, the uh, other syllables, the hundred syllables, around uh, the hong syllable in a kind of circle, you know. So this I'm talking right now is buzzer surface heart, not heart, your heart center, buzzer surface uh, heart center. And then when you recite the hundred syllable mantra, or buzzer surface hundred syllable mantra, kind of as a prayer, imagine at the same time that a kind of nectar of compassion uh, and wisdom sort of kind of, uh, it's a person, you know, the nectar drops down from each of the syllables, one drop after the another, and dropping down through the body of the Bajar Sattva, through the body of the, the Bajar Thotpa, which is, uh, which is the Bajar Sattva's, uh, the spiritual concept, uh, and, and passing through uh, the crown of your head, and bring into your mind all of your negative actions, all your physical illness, obscurations, we just talked about, talk about, right? Obs obstacles out of your body and purify all of them at the very moment, okay? Uh, and also you can, if you like, the, uh, extend the, 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 uh, the, we visualize the nectar, right? The nectar comes from uh, the syllables, but if you like the light, that's also fine. Lights, different rays of lights come from the syllables, and then you receive the or dissolve the lights, your body, and then purify all negative karmas. That's also, if you want, you can do that. And then after you finish the hundred syllable mantra, then you recite the, the confession prayer, right? Um, and once you have said this prayer, uh, you need to think that Bhajar uh, Sattva with mantra that you visualize above your head are dissolve into white light and dissolve into you and then you are no longer have ordinary form but you are now transformed into Bhajar Sattva just as you visualize him before. So this is the second uh, right and at this visualize you in your heart center, right now you are the Bajar Sattva, understand? The first time you visualize Bajar Sattva above your head, the second time you are sort of transformed into Bajar Sattva. So now your heart center, you have also visualized small moon disk and then top of that, the six syllable, Om Bajar Sattva Hong, six syllables. So that's why this is a little bit difficult, is it? It's, it's kind of complicated now, it's okay. Okay, so now you have these six syllables, your heart center, and then uh, the uh, om. Actually, five. <coughs> Bajar, om, Bajar. Do we have om or not? We do. Om Bajar sat for home. Okay, five. Yep, five different colors. So from these five syllables, um, five rays of light emanate from the syllables and in an upward direction, right? The light's upward, goes, goes up. And from these lights emanate many offerings, many offerings and offer to the old Buddhas and Bodhisattvas and all the Buddha's compassion, wisdom, blessings sent back in the form of light and dissolve into you. And that's also not done yet. You have to, the, another one is a same kind of lights, you know, come from the syllables and goes down, okay? Goes down and touching all living beings and purify their negative karmas and, you know, obscurations and afflictions, all of that, and purify all living beings. 
So do you understand what is different between these two visualizations? The first, you visualize Badr Sattva above your head. You receive the, the, the compassion, wisdom, and purify your negative karmas and everything. And the second, you are a Badr Sattva and purify others' negative karmas and all of that. That's the difference. So, uh, and then, uh, with this kind of visualization, uh, recite the six-syllable mantra, right? The second time, six-syllable mantra, as many times as you can. And then at the end, uh, everything is dissolved into light. This is very easy, into light. And then this light is like, you know, it's like a rainbow disappear in the, in, in the space, you know, uh, empty, kind of empty space. Everything dissolves into sort of simple city, free from any concept. And then sit for a while in non-conceptual and sort of, you know, try to recognize your true nature. Uh, or if you can't, then just peacefulness, peaceful. We just meditate on that, just relax in all of that. So that's all about Bhajra Sattva. Okay? Uh, so this time it's, it's lots of visualization. So if you can visualize the whole this visualization process of simultaneously and then <coughs> and um, do the also the recitation um, uh, together. That's that's good. But if you can, that's okay. That's all. Otherwise, you can you know uh, alternate. You know, uh, you know sometimes recite the mantra without visualizations. Sometimes concentrate on body of Bhajrasattva without recitation. Sometimes concentrate. On uh, the 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 nectar of flowing down the from the syllables, the wisdom, or compassion, or all of that, you you know purify your negative actions. Like sometimes concentrate on, uh, you know your the, the the powers regret regret for what you have done, and sometimes think about uh, you know um, resolution never n never do this again. So like that, you know alternately, you know you should change, you know, visualizations, how you focus on that kind of things. Understand? So, yeah. Hundred thousand, okay. hundreds, uh, hundred syllable mantra, hundred thousand. So, so how, how many six syllable mantras would there be? And just a mala each time you practice? Yeah, usually like one hundred eight. I know people like uh, practice on six syllable mantra, right? Hundred thousand, but I think hundred hundred syllable mantra is more power. Uh, more, more powerful than the six syllable mantra. So we have to uh, accumulate the uh, six hundred thousand, yeah, hundred, hundred, hundred syllable mantra, hundred thousand. Yeah. When you mentioned eight, um, I think when I, is that not a, a positive four? Renunciation? Yeah. Well, renunciation is good, <laughs> but it's difficult. Well, renunciation is uh, uh, usually people misunderstand. When we talk about renunciation, means you given you given up everything. But that's that's, and Tibetan renunciation means not giving up everything. Okay, renunciation means you make sure that you are. Uh, you take the path of liberation. Make sure that you want to practice, right? And think about 
contentment, think about satisfy, you know, that kind of things, I say renunciation. If you think about satisfaction or contentment, contentment means, means giving up, right? But here, not that means. Content means, yes, exactly, satisfied what you have. Okay? You know, so that's, that's renunciation. So, and to me, actually, renunciation means definitely go, you know. That, that's it. Renunciation means definitely go. And then where go? Go to, you know, I mean, take the path, which means the liberation. But uh, you don't have to think, you don't have to think that when you practice Bhadrasattva. Is that your question? Yep, okay. Oh, these questions? Keep simple. Just it talk. What you told me, you're saying. 37, practice of 37 Bodhisattva is from by the Urchitome. No. Urchitome. <laughs> yes, definitely. When we, when we talk about the difference of samsara, the outer preliminaries, yes, the renunciation. Uh, so that's why the, that that's why you know uh, uh, the renunciation. Uh, you kind of already uh, practice uh, when you practice outer preliminary. Uh, when we think about samsara, right? Yeah. A lot of what? Many books have power of divorce, power of regret, and then resolving to renunciate the things that you regret. So we say we, oh, we, okay. so we, say we renunciate those, those actions that we regret. That's where the word renunciate has been lost a bit. That's true. That's, that's very good. Yes. Yes. Yeah. But I can see with Bhadrasava, you don't, you know, you don't want to, you keep connecting to us. So if you develop renunciation, you lose Bhadrasava, you're separating from the senses. Correct? Bhadrasava is not renouncing us, he's coming to us from the past practice. So you lose yourself, but you stay close to people. Well, yeah, when you practice the outer preliminaries, then uh, this kind of, you know, doubt or cautions, uh, I think, will not arise in your mind. I mean, you understand uh, um, actually how difficult this samsara is. Then you will understand about the renunciation. Um, you, you taught me one time that Padma Sirwan, your, your teacher, I think it was Padma Sirwan, near the end of his life, he really thought at the same time as Sattva because he had developed such a huge sense of security. He actually told me he said he was here to teach us something and he, he had thought this way. So the practice, the, the whole aim of the practice is to see everything in the totality of everything being 
Oh yes. Um, samsara is not bad, though. I always think that there is a guy, a Christian guy, who always say that the Buddhism, the Buddhist, Buddhist point of view, samsara is bad. And they don't, they don't care. They don't care who live, who live in samsara. They just, they care only themselves. They practice, they get liberate, they get the enlightenment. The Buddhist practitioners, the Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, don't care if people are suffering. That's very untrue. Um, this guy really don't understand Buddhism at all. Very famous, very famous guy. And he has a book about it. And lots and lots of people misunderstand about Buddhism. They don't, many people don't want to practice Buddhism, even don't want to hear Buddhism. Because of this book, we have to do something. I mean, that's not good for other people. We have to tell the truth, you know. Buddhism, this, they take care, really, they, they, they care as people are suffering. Buddhism is actually about how to help others and take care of our lives, right? Yes, Buddhism say that the samsara is suffering. I think that's why he doesn't like about Buddhism because we say, what is the characteristic of samsara? It's suffering. He said, not, samsara is not suffering. That's not true, but it's true. I mean, if you really investigate, I think. So maybe you ask this guy, what is, then, what is samsara? What is the definition of samsara? Either happy, the happiness, or suffering? What do you say? Both? I think both, maybe. It depends how your, you know, well, I don't know, so <laughs> <laughs> don't want to talk that kind of thing here. But, you know, the, many people misunderstand. You know, many people misunderstand. That's not so good, you know. Um, Yeah, so the, you think about it, and you know, uh, we have to uh, do something. Our negative karmas, uh, these obs obscurations. So, Buddhist point of view, practice Bhadrasattva. Best method is practice mother sattva, purify all these obstacles. Uh, so how how do you know if you practice mother sattva? How do you know you whether you purify your negative action, uh, the karmas or not? Do you know? Yeah. Oh, well, that's good. Then everything's clear. <laughs> Uh, I mean, that's the point, right? Why, you know, I, know, I always, you know, so, something I want to practice, I have, first I have to understand why. Why I'm going to practice this? What is the benefit? Uh, investigate my mind, right? My actions, everything. Then it helps, then that's the benefit, and then I, I like it. And something, you know, you just practice, practice, practice. Same person, nothing changed. 
that means something wrong. You know, there is a something wrong. Or sometimes, you know, practice and you, um, worse, maybe sometimes worse. That's definitely wrong. So, you know, it's very important when you practice and just investigate yourself, uh, you know. Are you the same person or you change? Uh, so it's all the same, you know, the benefit of your meditation, whatever you practice, bodhicitta, bhajasattva, uh, everything, like, you know, jokchino, everything you practice, the result, you get more and more the, the compassion, the bodhicitta, wisdom. So actually two, right? Two things. The benefit of your practice meditation, wisdom, and compassion. So if you develop more and more those two, then definitely your meditation uh, is correct. If you practice without these two, bodhicitta and wisdom, even though you can do these magic things, you can see, uh, you know, I mean, you can see, you can understand people, what people are thinking, you can see all this situation in the future, something wrong. Mis many people misunderstand. Oh, there is, a, there is a teacher. He can see in the future. He understands what happened, what will happen. But if you have no bodhicitta, no wisdom, then even though you, you can do these things, very something is wrong. Something is wrong. Uh, so you have to investigate how much you, you get compassion. That's the very important. Compassion and wisdom. Okay, compassion means when you get you, you you have more and more compassion. That means you understand the the uh, the um, emptiness, interdependent origination. You understand emptiness, dzogchen. Then understand and you can develop compassion very easily. Uh, that's the one thing. And then you, if you have more wisdom, that means you, 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 are, you destroy. You can destroy your ignorance, you know. Wisdom and ignorance opposite. So your wisdom develop no ignorance. Ignorance, no wisdom. So, so these two are very important, OK? Uh, now. Uh, practice, practice, purification, meditation, okay? Um, so, now, most, most people here, you understand how to practice Bajrasattva, and you actually done many times, but if you are first, then uh, uh, when you meditate on this, imagine um, that all your uh, negative energies and kind of emotions, uh, when you practice this, also this is a very easy way. Uh, you know, if you are not Buddhist, easy way, you don't have to visualize all this uh, you know, bhajasattva things, you know, and syllables. But you, uh, uh, you, you have to intention your on your breath, and uh, when you breathe out, imagine that all your negative and this sort of negative emotions leave your body and your mind uh, with the breath, and then uh, you should feel that uh, you have sort of free. Um, you have uh, uh, freed, you know, this negative, you know, negative, uh, negative actions, negative emotions. And then when you breathe in, imagine 
that all positive energies actually uh, in the universe enter your body and mind in, in, uh, when you breathe in. Uh, and then just, uh, just to relax and uh, visualize uh, uh, the good energy uh, flowing to every part of your body and your mind and make your making you know relaxed and uh, and peace you know uh, so you should sort of concentrate on this practice uh, visualizations and experience and of course if you're buddhist then you have to visualize bhajra sattva exactly what it you know so you understand that right so uh, we should do practice bhajra sattva a little bit <clears throat> yes, yes, that's just fine. But uh, today, I, uh, here in, in our preliminary, this uh, uh, Bazar Sattva with concert. So that's why uh, here. But you know, it, it's, you can do that without concert. Um, some preliminaries only in Bajra Sattva without concert. Some preliminaries has both. But the both, the, this is actually represent. This, this is in Bajrayana's practice and method. Uh, the the Bajrayana's point of view, all these things are like something, right, for like represent, you know, the Bajr Sattva and his concert union is represent the union of emptiness, compassion, like that. Right, uh, but if you like to practice Bajrasattva, that's also fine. So you have to visualize Bajrasattva uh, and his his heart center, six hundred syllable, and then uh, either the nectar or the light come from the six hundred syllable and dissolve you, and then purify all of uh, things. No move, stay. Okay. Can we say this prayer one time together? Page number two. So when you say these prayers, actually it helps you the visual, you know, the visual, it actually says exactly, you know, the visualizations. So if you really uh, think about the meaning of the, the prayers, you will see, you will understand and easy, you know. Okay. On a lotus and moon disc, sit on the crown of my head. Sit Guru Bajra Sattva, cross-legged and clear as wrist. He has a peaceful smell and the youthful radiance of the major and minor mark <coughs> reflect the Samadabhada ornaments and holding a bajra and bells with arm closed. The embrace is packed the bajra thopa and nectar flows from the pond of union, cleans and illness, negative force and obscurations. So there are the, the when we say hundred syllable mantra three times today. Uh, Sanskrit version and Tibetan version. So you um, you can do both. You know, just uh, pick one. Okay, which one you want? What do you say? Uh, 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 what I say? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we'll do it how you say it. Oh, I say in Tibet. Yeah. <laughs> Remember last time we did that too. Last time we did. Okay. Maybe we'll, we'll say four times and two are Sanskrit and two are Tibetan. <laughs> or maybe you should keep only Tibetan. You know, it's kind of complicated, right? Yeah. Maybe we'll say Tibet because I'm I'm a Tibetan Lama. <laughs> Om Bhadra Sado Samaya 
manu balaya mother sadu de no ba de tande do me bawa sudu kayo me bawa subo kayo me bawa anurak do me bawa sarvas de me daya ta sarva karma sadami sadam shiryam guru ha ha hu bhagavan sarvata dangata madhur mami manja Bawa Mahasa Maya Sada Om Bandar Sada Samaya Mada Balaya Bandar Sada Dinoba Tidanda Dume Bawa Sudokayo Me Bawa Subokayo Me Bawa Anarakto Me Bawa Sarvasada Me Brayaza Sarvakarma Sada Me Sadam Shiryam Kuru Hum Ha 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 Ho Bhangawan Sarvata Tangata Bajar Mami Manza Bajar Bawa Maha Samaya Sado A Om Bajar Sado Samaya Mane Palaya Bajar Sado Dinoba Vitandaro Me Bawa Sado Kayo Me Bawa Subo kayo me bawa, anarakto me bawa, sarva sada me briya, sarva karma sada me, sada me shiriyam guru hum, ha 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 hu, banga. Tatanga dain benzar mami manza, benzar bawa maha samaya sado. syllable, confession, prayer. <laughs> With all negativity and obscurations purified like a crystal spear, and Bhadrasattva melt into white light and merge into me, transform everything that appears and exists into from Bhadrasattva, display of energy pure. Om Banzara Sado, 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 Om Banzara Sado,
Er is madre sattva. So the benefit of practice madre sattva, I always um, uh, think about that we all have uh, negative karma and obscurations. We all have. So this negative karma obscuration not just uh, automatically, you know, without cause and condition, right? We accumulate the cause and condition, negative karma and obscuration. So we have to understand and recognize that we have done something wrong. Every, you know, all of people have that. And then, not only remember and recognize, but we have to promise and take the vow, never I will do this again. Because this is very harmful myself and harmful others. So something is harmful, we should not do that again. So that is the benefit of practicing by the suffer. That's your purification. Nothing other than that. When you practice Mother Sattva, you have this motivation, you have these two things in your mind and make, your, make stop your uh, doing wrong things and you know, uh, harm actions, harm everything, others. In your mind, that you know, comes to your mind, that kind of, you know, the uh, purification. That is a benefit. That is the result of practicing by the self. If we have no that, then there is no 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 purification. You know, you do that again, harm others again and again. Then we accumulate this negative karma again and again, right? But once you practice by the self, 
you say yourself, I say myself, I will not do that again. That is the, the result, the benefit of Bhagavad practice. So that's all. Thank you very much. Take a break.